wonderful. I feel like we're, we're really getting somewhere now. Um, so, so in the last video, I introduced this idea of, um, of, of crosstalk between the 5-HT2A receptor and the glutamate receptor. Um, let's revisit um, the way that we, uh, we understood this. So let's look at this diagram again. So, so first of all, recall that when a psychedelic drug binds the 5-HT2A receptor, um, it, it causes a particular uh, conformational chain. We cause this little loop to kind of stick outwards, um, which allows the, the 5-HT2A receptor, as shown here, to interact with uh, the glutamate receptor. So when glutamate normally uh, activates the glutamate receptor, it activates this, what we call this GI pathway, and you know what that GI pathway does now. It activates the potassium channel. And LSD, when it binds the 5-HT2A receptor, activates the GQ pathway, uh, which leads to phosphorylation and deactivation of the potassium channels. Um, and this leads to depolarization depolarization, whereas the activation of the, so I should write that here, that leads to, so depolarization, that's kind of important, whereas GI activation by activating potassium channels leads to hyperpolarization. However, when LSD in particular, because of this conformational change, uh, because it causes the glutamate and the 5-HT2A receptor to kind of stick together, um, the 5-HT2A receptor actually inhibits or weakens this GI pathway, it weakens the ability of, of, uh, of the, the mGluR2 receptor to activate the GI pathway. Um, so let's see if we can use this now to explain why then LSD in particular has, is psychedelic, or at least goes some way to explaining why LSD is psychedelic, but lisride isn't. So let's have a look at uh, this diagram. Okay, so we've, we've kind of established now, hopefully pretty clearly, um, that the, the 5-HT2A receptor activates the GQ pathway, which leads to depolarization. We should understand that in detail now. Uh, whereas the mGluR um, receptor activates the GI pathway, and this leads to hyperpolarization, brings the membrane potential further from threshold potential by activating potassium channels. So they are opposing each other. They're fighting against each other. So what happens when uh, lyceride binds to the 5-HT2A receptor? Lyceride is non-psychedelic, remember. So, well, it binds to the 5-HT2A receptor, so it activates it, activates the GQ pathway, and it wants to push the membrane potential in this direction, it wants to depolarize, right? So I've, uh, this is why I've kind of weighted this seesaw towards the GQ pathway. However, because gluta glutamate is always present, uh, it's always fighting against it uh, because it's activating the GI pathway, which, of course, is working to... Uh, push the membrane potential in the opposite direction. So lyceride, it's not very effective at depolarizing the, the, uh, the cell. However, what then happens when LSD comes into the picture? Well, we know LSD does two things. First of all, LSD, it activates the GQ pathway, um, thus promoting depolarization However, it also inhibits the GI pathway by, um, by this receptor crosstalk, by causing the 5H2A receptor to interact with the, the glutamate receptor, which basically um, reduces the, this, this, um, this antagonizing effect, reduces the, the competition from the mGluR receptor, which means that uh, LSD is kind of un- uh, without competition, it is, is, it is, is untrammeled in its ability to activate the, the GQ pathway without competition from the GI pathway um, and, and is able to strongly depolarize the, um, uh, the membrane. Cool, right? That's pretty cool stuff, I think. I think um, 
it is undoubtedly it's it's something of, of an oversimplification, uh, and and it's it's never as simple as that. But but conceptually conceptually at least uh, this is this is the kind of the prevailing wisdom. This is how I think, you know, based upon current evidence, is 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 a good way to think about the differences between these two molecules, uh, lyceride and LSD. When it, when lyceride binds, it, it's unable to kind of overcome the, um, but although it does activate the GQ pathway and does kind of push, try to push the membrane potential upwards, um, it, there's too much competition from all this glutamate, which is activating the, the GI pathway uh, and, and basically never, never allows it to, um, to, to fully kind of depolarize the cell. Um, whereas LSD, because it's inhibiting um, the, the mglu the receptor by causing this receptor crosstalk because LSD specifically causes that conformational change in a 5-HT2A receptor, which allows the 5-HT2A receptor to bind to the glutamate receptor, which basically weakens the glutamate receptor's ability to uh, activate the GI pathway. It tips the balance uh, much more effectively in favor of this GQ signaling and thus depolarization um, of the uh, of the membrane potential, so I think that's um, that's almost as much as I'm going to say about that. Um, almost. Now I should, if I'm uh, going to be kind of um, completely honest with you, um, this is, uh, uh, of course, this is a, a simplified picture of what's actually going on. And no doubt it's actually more complex than this. Now, I told you that when the glutamate receptor is activated, it activates uh, this GI protein, uh, which causes um, this G beta gamma subunit to interact with the potassium channel. That does happen. However, there, 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 is, there are some other effects of this, this GI uh, protein. So let's kind of have a look at what's kind of going on in a little bit more detail here. Um, so when the glutamate receptor is activated by um, uh, glutamate here, um, so this is what we looked at, this pathway here, where this G beta gamma subunit dissociates and interacts with the potassium channel. However, in truth, this GI uh, subunit is itself activated and actually uh, interacts with another signaling pathway. It actually inhibits a, a protein called adenylyl cyclase, um, which itself produces a, a molecule called cyclic AMP or CAMP, uh, which then activates protein kinase A, PKA. Again, don't worry about the names here. And it's known that PKA interacts with potassium channels. It also interacts with um, the this ERK pathway that um, um, that the 5-HT2A receptor activates. So there's, in other words, in other words, um, there's more than one way that this glutamate receptor is active uh, is interacting with the 5-HT2A receptor. However, it's not completely. Uh, understood. Um, and so rather than spending a lot of time talking about um, all these possible intracellular signaling pathway interactions between the two receptors, I kind of focused on something that is a little bit more concrete. Uh, but you should be aware uh, that things are obviously a little bit more complicated than this. Um, however, we did, we did talk about the idea uh, in an earlier unit um, of, of inter, uh, intracellular signaling pathways of different receptors interacting with each other. Um, so let's kind of have a look at, at the way we kind of described it. So we, 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 we introduced the idea that when one receptor, uh, for example, is activated by a, um, uh, an agonist, in this case we've got the 5-HT2A receptor being activated by lyceride, it activates a particular pattern of intracellular signaling illustrated here uh, by these uh, activation of these particular signaling proteins, right? Um, whereas when another 
uh, receptor is activated, in this case the glutamate receptor, it activates a different signaling pathway. Um, now, when both of the receptors are activated, you get a completely different, because of the interaction between the signaling pathways that are activated by the individual receptors, you get a different pattern of subcellular network activity than when you do when uh, e either alone, either of the receptors on their own are activated. Um, so what you, what, another way you can think about this, if you want to think about this more generally, is that when lyceride and glutamate are activating the, um, the 5-HT2A and the, the MGLUR2 receptors respectively, you get a particular pattern of subcellular network activity. However, when LSD and, um, and when LSD and glutamate uh, are activating their receptors, because of this crosstalk between them that we discussed, you activate a, an entirely different pattern of network activity. Um, and this is certainly the case, um, but it's not fully understood exactly uh, how that leads to um, LSD's kind of unique pattern of intracellular signaling that, that results in it being psychedelic. Um, yeah, in other words, it, it kind of gets a little bit complicated and, and um, because we are dealing with, with, with complex networks of subcellular, subcellular signaling molecules, which is why I wanted to um, kind of simplify it enough so you really get a good idea um, of, of why this receptor crosstalk actually um, reduces the kind of the fight between the, the, the glutamate receptor and the 5-HT2A receptor. I think it's a pretty clear kind of image of, of how this works, and it's certainly involved. Um, however, in the, in the coming years, as, as you kind of follow the research, if you follow the research and the literature, you may see a, a more comprehensive picture emerge, and perhaps you know, in, the, in the coming years I will do another course where I actually bring you kind of up to date on, on how this works. Whew. Okay, so... Um, so that really brings us to the end of this unit. So, so what have we learned in this unit? Well, we've learned that psychedelic molecules, particularly the classic psychedelics, they activate the, the 5H2A receptor in a particular way. And we, uh, they, they, they bind in a particular fashion, uh, which causes their own characteristic conformational change in the receptor. Um, that isn't shared, that doesn't happen when a non-psychedelic drug binds to the receptor. And we, and we saw how psychedelic molecules cause this kind of this loop on the intracellular domain of the receptor to poke outwards, which allows the 5-HT2A receptor to interact with uh, the glutamate receptor uh, and actually inhibit the glutamate receptor activity. So inhibit the glutamate receptor's ability to activate that GI signaling pathway that normally wants to uh, hyperpolarize the cell. Um, and that this explains why lyceride is not active as a psychedelic, at least, because it doesn't cause this crosstalk, uh, and so it doesn't uh, reduce the competition from the MGLUR2 receptor. Okay, uh, a lot to take in there. Um, what we haven't looked at yet, and what should still be kind of unclear in your mind, uh, is why or why does hyperpolar why does sorry why does depolarization of this membrane potential uh, by the activation of this 5-HT2A receptor actually cause the psychedelic effects? Uh, and that is the subject of uh, Unit Seven. So this Unit Seven is really in my opinion, it's, it's the culmination of everything we've discussed so far. Uh, we're going to go back to discussing this kind of the way the world model is constructed uh, by the brain, you know, all this sort of cortical column stuff. Um, and we're going to go into a lot more detail of, of, of how these columns are, are structured and how they, how they interact with each other. And then we're going to bring in everything we've learned in these last two units about um, the activation of the 5-HT2A receptor by psychedelic drugs and their effect on the membrane potential and why this, this causes this 
um, this change in the structure and dynamics of your world model, which is ultimately experienced as the psychedelic effect. So we're kind of finally, uh, we're getting really quite close to the finish line in a way. I've only got two units left. Um, the next unit, it will talk about classic psychedelics generally. And then the final unit, we're actually going to focus on DMT. And then we'll really introduce some uh, really cutting edge and quite brand new research into into what's kind of special about DMT as this kind of, a, kind of astonishing kind of reality channel switch psychedelic drug. Um, so, yeah, so a lot to look forward to. Um, excited for the next unit? You bloody well should be. So I will see you there. Kidding. Uh, however, if um, if you do want to support the production of future courses, or you just want to leave a tip, um, then there are virtual tip boxes below. There's PayPal, Kofi, or Kofi, whatever it is. Even a Bitcoin address if that is your thing. Minimally, please like and subscribe. It really helps me. And please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you use them. Alien Insect. And I think that's about it. I hope you're enjoying the course. Thank you.